I'm going to show you how to bind a project that's got um, external angles and it doesn't matter what those angles are they're going to turn out perfect. For this I've got the item that I'm going to bind of course which is my bell pull. I've got my bias binding. Uh, I've made this myself. All I did was cut this to um, 70 millimeters. What well, to get the measurement for your edge? Measure from where you want it, uh, your binding to go from to the edge. In this case, it's 15 mil. Times that by four, so that's 60 mil. And then I add uh, 10 mil on top because by the time you folded it, by the time you've factored in the thickness of your item and the angles you can lose that easily. I've also got a few clips you can use pins anything that you want and a piece of card and the card that I've got is a quarter of the width of my uh, binding and I'm going to be using that to get perfectly folded corners. You're going to start out by leaving yourself a really long tail where you've got to decide where you want the join and I think I'm going to aim for mine to be uh, here so I'm going to leave a really long tail because we're going to need that to be able to do the join to join the two tail ends together so I'm going to start stitching round about here so I've left myself a good four inches so I'm just going to put a clip on there. I'm going to be stitching all the way down here and I'm going to follow the crease line of my binding. And then I'm going to be turning my binding back on itself. Now, the way I do this, and there's probably lots and lots of different ways, but this is my preferred method. You can do this at your machine as you stitch. I pull my fabric down level with the edge. This piece of card I line up with my next edge and where this crease line and my card meet is where I'm going to stop and then I will be coming off to this corner here. So I'm just going to mark that so that I can see it. So I will stitch down here from here down and then I will stitch across here. So there's my stitch line. I'm now going to turn my work so that my next edge is vertical. And then I'm going to bring my tail of my binding up so that it sits vertically in line with, and I'm just gonna put a ruler here so you can see, with my edge, like so. And that's going to be our crease here. So once I've done that, I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to bring it down level with this edge. I'm just going to pop a pin in here just to hold that in place for the minute. So that is going to be my crease there. So I'm going to be stitching all the way down here and I've got my little piece of card here and I'm going to line it up against the next edge here and the point here which is where I'm going to come off and where my crease and my uh, card meet that is when I'm going to come off at my angle. Now normally I would stitch nearly all the way down 
and then I would put my mark in because as you stitch it's going to stretch your, your binding a little bit. So once I get down to here, my corner is here and I will stitch off at the angle here. So we'll come down here and off here. I've just drawn this in pencil a bit bolder so that you can see it. So we're starting on the very edge of our previous edge. So there's what I've just stitched. We're now going to turn our work so that the next side is vertical. Pull our tail back. And then fold it down. And once more, I'm just going to pop a little pin in there just to hold that pleat in, in place. It's a bit of a tongue tw twister. <laughs> okay. So back to our little piece of card, which again, I would stitch down here till I was nearly there and then mark it in place. But for the purposes of showing you, I'm doing it this way. So there's my my what will be my stitch line. My card is lined up to be level with the edge of my next corner, uh, my next um, edge. And then I'm just going to put a little mark where I'm going to come off at the corner. And normally I wouldn't draw this in, I would just stitch down to there and then, then eyeball it. So there's my corner. I can't see a thing that I'm doing, I'm ever so sorry. <laughs> okay, and then we go across here. So our stitch line is going to be from the edge here, down and across. Once you've done this a couple of times, it's really quick and you'll be able to do it in front of your machine. You won't have to do it at the side like I'm doing at all. So once more, there's where I've just stitched. I'm now going to turn my work so that my next edge is sitting vertically. Pull my um, fabric tail back up and bring it down level with the edge that I'm going to stitch next. And I'm just going to pop a little pin just in there to hold that while I get going. So then I stitch all the way down. Take my little piece of card. Line it up with the two corners so it's flush to the edge and then mark off where I'm going to stop and come off at an angle. My corner's there. So now I'm going to stitch all the way down here and off at this angle here and I'm going to start right on the edge here.
So there's our stitch line. For the last two corners I'm going to show you how I would go about doing this at my machine so you can see that it's not difficult at all. So what I would do is fold my fabric back as I would when I was doing it on the, at the side there and then bring it back down and make sure that it lined up with the edge of my panels and then I would stitch And then I do the same again. I'm going to pull this tail down just so it's out where I don't catch it. So pull it upwards so that it's in line with your fabric here and fold it down. And for the last time, just marking my corner, place my card, mark off, I'm just going to um, give you one little tip. Don't go beyond your line because when you go to turn it over to do the other side your um, fabric isn't going to stretch neatly around the corner. So always stop just before the line or on your actual um, line where you're going to come off. We've now got to think about our join before we actually put our last corner in. I'm going to fold it as if I'd stitched it, just so that I can see where it's going to fall and maybe even put a bit of a pin in there just for a minute, just to hold it in place. Okay, I want my join to fall where the join on the panels are. So I'm going to fold my tail up so that it's parallel with the edge of the panel and then fold it back down. And I want to leave a little gap and that's going to allow for the fabric stretching a little because we don't want any puckers. So I'm going to finger press that and then I'm going to bring the top tail down and do exactly the same, fold that back just so that it falls the other side of this um, join. Let's open that out. I 
I want that to run to the edge of my fabric as well and then I'm going to finger press that into position. Next we're going to give ourselves some slack so I'm going to fold my panel and just put a pin in it, effectively shorten it just for a minute. That gives me slack on my tails and I can now align my two creases and get them to match up. And then I can open them out. And I'm going to pin each side of the crease. And now I'm just going to fold all that back out of the way and I'm going to take this pin out that was holding my pleat there. I'm now going to stitch along the crease line that I made here and join the two tails together. So that's our um, join done. We're now going to position this in place and we've got to deal with the corner as well as lining this join up with this join. So I'm going to start with this one and I'm just going to pull that gently in place so that it all lines up. And then I'm going to put a pin in. To deal with the corner, it's very simple. I'm just going to turn this around so I can see what I'm doing. You're going to pinch the fabric so that it lines with the stitch line here. I'm just going to put a pin along there just to ease it into place. And then I'm going to fold it up and then pop a pin in to hold it in place while I stitch. And as before, we're now going to stitch all the way down. These um, ends where we joined the two tails I'm going to flatten out so that they sit nice and flat so there's no bulk when I turn my fabric to do the other side. So that's all our joins done and looking at this I didn't get it too bad considering I couldn't see what I was doing most of the time. So that's all the stitching for the binding on this side completed. I'm going to turn this over and just pull my binding up. I just pull gently on each of the corners. And then that will uh, put the creases in nicely on the front and I'm going to press this before I go any further so that they all sit neatly. So that's all pressed in. I'll show you my corners. There they are folded on the front and pressed and here on the back I've just folded them in so that the point where you fold, where, where you create the fold is all neat and meeting with the following um, edge here. You've got two options for stitching. You can either um, stitch it on your machine and you would, you would follow, um, go all the way around the edge 
top stitching basically so that it holds the back or you can hand stitch the back and I prefer to do this method because um, it gives you invisible stitching and I'm not a great straight stitcher so I prefer to do it by hand and, and it gives me a much neater um, and a more satisfactory result I find so that's what I'm going to do now I'm going to start along the long edge and I'm going to anchor my uh, thread and I'm using embroidery thread because I find it much stronger and I can blend it better with my fabric so I'm just going to anchor it underneath and fold that back over I'm just going to slip stitch all the way around and I'm just going to just this side of uh, my stitch line and that's my thread from when I secured my um, binding from the front just slip the needle under and just catch the edge literally just catch the edge And you can do quite long stitches, you don't have to do short ones. It doesn't take long to do the back, no matter how... Oh, look, you, can, you, you can't even see it. I'm going to do all, that all the way round. I won't make you watch me do it, it'd be painful. <laughs> I'm not very fast at stitching. And then join me again when I've finished. So there's the back all stitched and completed and I've pressed it and that's our bell pull complete i hope you enjoyed this stitch along if you did please give me a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to be notified of new videos as they're published please pop along to creative kiwi's facebook group there's lots of ideas help and inspiration there for everybody and thank you very much for joining me you'll find a link to this design in the video description below along with lots of other useful information and a discount code, so please do take the time to have a look. Mm -hmm.